Yeah, well, what can I say after that one, what you just heard? <laughs> I mean, we've got, the, we've got the trailblazers sitting right here. So, um, uh, so, so I'm going, I'm, what, I'm, what I thought I would do is I'll just uh, take you over uh, the few basic things which make up uh, what my work is. And there are videos, but I won't show the whole videos. Some of you have seen them, some of you haven't, but I'll just show you a few seconds of each and see if we can put it together in 14 minutes and 42 seconds into, <laughs> into the future of schooling. Um, so, uh, so you know, uh, it, it, we've got a lot of um, the, um, young entrepreneurs sitting here. So imagine that I, uh, that, that a gentleman, a young man or woman uh, applies for a job with him, for example, the, the, uh, the 3D camera thing. And, uh, uh, and, and comes over there and um, uh, says to him, so he says, what can you do? And uh, he says, um, I have good handwriting. My grammar is excellent. Uh, I spell very well and I can recite the 17 times tables. <laughs> now, <laughs> he, maybe he won't get the job, you know, and, and uh, maybe instead uh, uh, he might then ask him, do you know if it's possible to get a connector which will change micro HDMI into VGA? <laughs> so why didn't that guy get a job? Because that's what his school taught him for 12 years is because that school was designed for employers 200 years ago. So, uh, so if, 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 now if he went and applied to an employer 200 years ago and said to him that, you know, I, I can make a camera or something like that, he won't get the job because that guy's going to ask him, that, uh, do you know Latin? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a bit of a problem there. I bumped into all of this uh, just accidentally uh, 14 years ago by sticking computers into walls, which, you know, lots of people have heard of and, and showed that children in groups unsupervised can teach themselves how to use a computer and how to use the internet, how to use Google, irrespective of the fact that they don't know English, they don't go to school, and in those days they've never seen a computer. So it was a, a, a interesting result in those days. It isn't all that interesting now because two and a half year olds figure out how to use um, laptops, I mean, how to use iPads. So, uh, but in those days it was very important. Um, it raised questions about what's training all about. And uh, j just a glimpse of uh, those years. It's always fun to watch this one. This eight year old on the right hand side uh, with his student on his left, six years old, and he's teaching her to browse in English, but they don't go to school. So um, uh, we saw it over and over again. <laughs> So, uh, you know, so groups of children can teach themselves to use a computer. And in those days, we would have, I would have said, in spite of not having teachers. Um, then I started to look at what else can they do. And I'll, I'll give you um, maybe just one example. Um, in, a, uh, in a city in uh, southern India called Hyderabad, um, these are just pictures of children, you know, sort of figuring out all sorts of things by themselves. Um, in this city called Hyderabad, uh, there's a problem. The problem is that uh, the children uh, are taught English and it's very important that they be taught English. So their parents spend, their parents are very poor, but they spend whatever little they can to uh, send them to schools where they learn English. But the English is taught, because these are slum schools, the English is taught by teachers who are from the local area and who have this very strong accent. I mean, if you think Geordie is difficult, then go to <laughs> Hyderabad. <laughs> so, so, um, so the children come out of that school and then they go and apply for a job and the employer says, well, your English seems to be quite good, but I can't understand a word of what you're saying. <laughs> so, so that doesn't help much. We have a bit of that problem here as well, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, so, so I thought, how, how do I address a problem like that? So I, I went into a school 
They gave the children a computer with a um, uh, speech to text uh, engine in it and uh, told them to talk into the computer. So they spoke and the computer typed nonsense. So the children said, oh, it doesn't understand anything of what we're saying. So I said, well, I'm going to leave this computer here with you and uh, for two months and you have to make yourselves understood. So the children said, and how do we do that? So, so that's uh, you heard the answer. I said, I don't know, I haven't a clue. And, and anyway, I don't like slums, I'm going away. <laughs> so, so, so I went away, I came back after a couple of months and I had measured their pronunciation and done all sorts of things and came back after a couple of months and met this little fellow called Faizan outside the classroom. So outside the room where they had the computer. And I say to him, Faizan, uh, how are you? And Faizan looks up at me and says, fantastic. <laughs> so, so, so I said, gosh, what's going on inside? You know what they'd done was, they had found something called the Speaking Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> and they would make the dictionary say things, and then they would copy the accent, speak it into the computer, check if the right pronunciation was coming out, correct each other's accents, and in two months that changed. I measured it and it was, you know, it was just great. You'll see just a little bit of it uh, in a second. Yes, he's my cousin. Yes, he's my cousin. Yes, he's my cousin. Three, three children comparing each other. And uh, by the way, you, you might, some of you might know that girl actually. She uh, uh, works in a call center now in Hyderabad. Might have sold you a <laughs> credit card. <or> something. <laughs> if she did, good for her. <laughs> so anyhow, um, at that point, after a lot of experiments, I just, uh, we came to this conclusion that groups of children can teach themselves to, to you know, they, they can complete educational objectives by themselves, given a computer, given the internet. It has to be groups. It has to be computers and the internet. And Again, all this happens in spite of their not having a teacher. When I came to Newcastle about seven years ago, I came on a big research project which was to improve uh, schooling in India. Um, uh, in Newcastle, people said, how far can this go? So I decided I'll design an experiment to test that. I made a hypothesis. The hypothesis, the research question was, can Tamil speaking 12 year olds, Tamil is a South Indian language, can Tamil speaking 12 year olds in a Indian village teach themselves the biotechnology of DNA replication in English from roadside computers. And I thought, you know, this is a fantastic social science question. Uh, we'll, we'll test them, pre-test them, they'll get a zero. I'll come back after a while, I'll post-test them, they'll get a zero. I'll go back to Newcastle and say we need teachers. So I found a village. It was called Kali Kuppam. And in Kali Kuppam, I downloaded some stuff from the internet about DNA replication and genetics. Children came crowding, is that a game? So I said, no, it's not a game, but it's something really interesting. It's all in English. So they came and looked and said, it's got big English words. So how, how can we understand anything in this? We can't understand anything. So I said, well, you know, I, I don't know how you can understand anything. And, you know, there's no place to stay here. <laughs> so, you know. I pre-tested them, they got a zero. Came back after three months, the children said, we've understood nothing. It's all in English, it's like chemistry. So I said, nothing, so what did you do for two months? So they said, we looked at the screens every day. So I said, and? And then one girl says, well, apart from the fact that improper replication of the DNA molecule causes genetic disease, we've understood nothing else. <laughs> so, 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 so um, here's, a, here's a quick look at uh, the, that village. So there's really nothing there, you know. <laughs> Except for these guys who taught us that the impossible can happen. So I, when I measured, they've gone from zero to 30%. That's an educational impossibility given the given the environment. I mean, just think about it. Tamil speaking children standing around in the tropical heat with biotechnology of DNA 10 years ahead of their time in a language they don't speak. Zero to 30 percent. But I couldn't come back to Newcastle with that result because in the Victorian system, 30 percent is a fail. So how do I get them to pass to get the 20 more marks? I found a local girl who's a friend of theirs 
22 years old and I asked her, listen, can you help them to learn more biotechnology? And she said, absolutely not. I, <laughs> I didn't have any science in school. I don't know what on earth they do under that tree all day long with that computer. I can't help you. So I got an idea. I told her, why don't you use the method of the grandmother? So she says, what's that? So I said, you know, just stand behind them and every time they do anything, just say, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth did you do that? What's the next page after that? You know, that sort of thing. She did it perfectly. If you just go back a slide, she did it perfectly for two months and uh, the scores went up to 50%. Same as my control school, a rich private school in New Delhi with a trained biotechnology teacher. So when I saw that graph, I thought there is another way. We missed that way. There, there has to be another mechanism here, something that we don't understand. So I came back. I came back to Gateshead, looking for grandmothers. I put out some appeals in newspapers saying, if you're a British granny, if you have broadband and a web camera, will you give me one hour of your time per week for free? And I got, uh, in the first two weeks, I got 200. So I know more British grandmothers than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> they form what's called the granny cloud. Because what did we learn in Kuppam? You'll get zero to 30% by themselves. And then you need a nudge. And for that nudge, you don't need a disciplinarian, you need a gran. Okay, so the granny cloud sits up there. If there's a problem with a school, with children, anything, anywhere in the world, we beam a gran. And she goes and she fixes that, you know. So I started uh, doing some experiments in Gateshead. Now that I knew that there was almost no limit to where it can go. And it's in Gateshead that a new method started to form. And Sagata's new teaching methods have now also arrived on these shores. The lessons learned from his very first experiments in India with hole-in-the-wall computers are now being applied to schools in Gateshead. I'm Stephen. Bonjour. Bonjour, good. The process is that you, you take a group of children, you ask them to make groups of four. Each group of four is allowed to use one computer with an internet connection. And then you trigger off the system. Okay, I'm, I'm just skipping that because uh, you know, basically you, you heard uh, how it's done. So the idea is you bring the hole in the wall into the classroom. What's the hole in the wall? One computer, which means a low amount of resource, lots of children. And by this time I had learned one more thing. Remember I kept saying all this is happening in spite of the teacher not being there? Well, I've changed that statement now. It's happening because the teacher is not there. I learned that in Kuppam. The, my, the act of my saying that I'm going to go away, I don't know anything about this. That's what makes those 12 year olds run. So if that is the case, then what will it do to children? I did a little experiment in Long Benton, which is a community nearby, um, uh, where, you know, all the little boys, um, unfortunately, <laughs> all of them wanted to become footballers when they grow up. So I showed them uh, TED Talks. Showed them, I would show them a TED Talk and then I'd say, Who's, uh, what's going on over there? Who's that woman talking? Why does she do what she does? Have them research it in groups of four and report back. It took about eight weeks before I hit jackpot. One of the little girls came up and said, Sugata, so what does one have to do to become like that? So I said, okay, I got you there. <laughs> so, so it is very easy to change, you know. It's, it's, it's just that the media never shows any role models other than footballers. So what can the poor fellows uh, do? So the idea is that you, uh, that you make self-organized learning environments where children are in charge. It's like a cyber cafe for children, but it's designed, it has to be designed so that it keeps adults away. Um, it, it, there's, you know, there are ways to do that. Um, uh, and uh, so the children know that it belongs to them. And then you, you release, I can only use the word release, a big question at them. And creating those big questions is the teacher's job. So don't think that the teacher is not required. The teacher's job actually gets really hard. What are big questions? Well, there, there could be plenty. I'll give you the one that's my favorite right now. If you want to teach 12 year olds, uh, genetics of cell expression, you know, how biological cells sometimes express and sometimes don't, then you could make a question. The question could be, how come women cannot grow beards while men can? Okay, about 30 minutes later you have cell expression. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Um, and then there's the granny cloud, uh, which has been operating mainly out of Gateshead. This one is, I think, worth looking at, just to get a, f a flavor of it. That's right, as fast as you can. As fast as you can. You can't catch me. You say it. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Well done. Very good. So it gets. So we've had eight, nine hundred hours of instruction since 2009 across these vast distances with South America, with uh, India and so on, out of England. Um, so what am I trying to say now? Well, I'm trying to say that electricity and broadband should be free for children. Uh, we live in an environment where this is required. We need a curriculum where, I mean, we can't change the government's curriculum, but we can convert it into nice questions. So instead of saying self-expression, you know what you have to say. And then, if we have self-organized assessment methods, which we just heard actual practitioners talk about, then we've got a new system. What is that system going to be like? It's going to be, it looks as though Google, Wikipedia, TED, um, Skype, and a few grannies, and a few big questions could make a school. Uh, I want, I gave it a name, School in the Cloud. And what I'm going to do with that TED money is that I'm going to build seven of them, five in India and two here in England, Gateshead and Durham. Uh, what are they going to be? Well, in India, the, they're going to be of all sorts, but in India, the, the, the most interesting one is in an area called the Sundarbans, which is where the Ganges meets the sea. I found a village which is out of, well, basically out of the Stone Age. They've got nothing. There's no electricity. There's no health care. There's no schooling. There's nothing at all. So in there, I was thinking, now, what can I do here? How can I do anything? Okay, I'll get solar energy and so on. And uh, like we all get used to pulling out our phones, I pulled out my phone and I saw a strong 3G signal <laughs> from somewhere. <laughs> and I said, this is where I'm going to build the first of the schools in the cloud. It'll be the Stone Age meeting 3G. <laughs> okay, and then all the way up the socioeconomic ladder, until we come up here to England, where we have, well, it's, it's the low, mid, middle and the lower middle classes of England. Uh, I've chosen schools of that kind. Um, all of this should come up here, uh, including a facility behind St. James's, the football stadium, uh, a, a facility called Children in Charge, where I, what I want to do, again, I learned this from children in India, uh, a glass structure, pyramidal, with uh, projectors sticking out on all sides, with which uh, children can paint the buildings all around using whatever programs. I, I think it will be great fun to, to take a visitor around for a walk and just show them this riot of color and say, well, that's our children, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so it, it really pleases me to, to, to be here to tell you that this is what's going to happen next. I don't know what I'll have to say next year uh, if Herb calls me back again. Uh, uh, but I'm sure uh, something very interesting. And I just want to, to, to stop by reminding you that uh, this is, uh, as you listen to the story, you must have realized this is not what I did. This is what I learned from children. And those children came firstly from the slums of India, and then they finally put it together into a world-changing, game-changing scenario here in Gateshead. Thank you. 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 Thank you.